Hi, I'm Philippe Heller with the Real Estate Inspection Company with your Maintenance Minute. Today we're going to cover furnaces and how to change the filter and do some simple maintenance. Uh, this is a furnace that's in a vertical configuration. Some newer homes have them in a horizontal configuration up in the attic. Most houses from the mid-70s through the early 90s have it in a vertical configuration either in the garage or in a hallway closet. This one's easy to show you, so we're going to work on this furnace today. The first thing you have to do is open up the system to access the filter. Do that by lifting up on the upper panel and on the lower panel. This one's very easy. Sometimes you need a uh, screwdriver or something to help you lift these because it can be rather tight. Now if you notice we have the filter way down at the bottom. Uh, it's held in place with a spring. So the first thing you need to do is move the spring out of the way and pull the filter out. You're going to want to take note of the size of the filter so you know what to replace it with. And as you can see, this filter is quite dirty. It's got pet hair and dust. Uh, this one certainly is overdue for being replaced. Um, we recommend the disposable filters as opposed to the washable filters. Uh, we just feel it's more sanitary. And these filters come in a wide range of quality levels, kind of uh, based on where you live. If you're in a rural setting or if you have allergies, you're certainly going to want to get a better filter. Um, and they range in price from a few bucks all the way up to thirty, forty dollars. Um, let me get rid of this. Uh, let's do a little maintenance check of your furnace. When you're standing here, now's a good opportunity to take a look at the furnace and make sure it's in good condition. Look at the flue, make sure it's not rusted, make sure all the sections of the flue are fastened together and there's no leaks. Uh, also look for any tape or any sealant and make sure that that's not uh, leaking air because otherwise you're just throwing money away when you heat or cool your house. Uh, you're also going to want to look at the interior of the furnace. If there's a lot of dust and debris, go ahead and vacuum it out because you don't want the dust getting into the system. It can also be a fire hazard if enough dust gets uh, accumulated by the burner compartment, it can catch on fire. Down below where the filter was, you want to look in there. If you see any rodent droppings, you're going to want to call an exterminator. You don't want rodent droppings to accumulate in your heating system because rodents carry hantavirus and that can contaminate the ductwork, get into your house and make you and your family sick. So if you see rodent droppings, call an exterminator. I'm just going to use a shop vac. You can use your house vacuum cleaner with the wand attachment and uh, just vacuum it out. Okay, so one thing to note on your filter is make sure you have the right size and then there's an arrow on the side of the filter which indicates the direction that the air should flow through the filter. Um, since the fan is here, the air gets returned to the system, goes through the filter, then the fan, then the burner compartment and back in through your house. Um, I'm just gonna open this up real quick sure you unwrap it so that the air can flow through it. Then the arrow pointing upwards. We'll slide it in here and make sure that it fully covers the opening and then snap the spring back in place to hold the filter down. If your spring is missing, you need to replace it or fashion something to hold the filter in place. Otherwise, the filter will just get sucked upwards and the air will go around the filter and defeat the purpose of it. So you need to have the filter held in place. Now we're just going to close this up uh, in a reverse order. You have to put the covers back on the furnace for it to work. Most modern units have a safety switch right here which will prevent the furnace from coming on unless the covers are in place and that's to prevent carbon monoxide from being sucked back into the circulation. So I'm just going to put these back on. Bottom first, then the top. There you go. Now you should check your filter at least every three months, and um, especially if you live in a rural area. If you live in an urban area or you simply don't use the uh, system that much, then you can uh, change the filter maybe as infrequently as once a year, but you should still check it every three to six months. Check out more maintenance tips on SDInspect.com, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.